Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Chanel. This is where I show you what I do to optimize my life. Today I wanted to talk about a subject that's very dear to my heart and very personal, my undiagnosed ADHD and how I got diagnosed in fourth year of medical school. I hesitated to talk about this topic on the internet because of my residency application that's coming up but you know I struggled so much with it and if they don't take me for that then it's fucked <laughs> so like if you like my video subscribe if you want more like this and continue watching if this interests you the point of this video is not making a diagnostic video of any kind it's more like me telling my story and if you can relate then i hope that now you can recognize it and go get help long story short when i was a kid i was always hyper and hyper talkative i would talk so much that i would talk to myself in the mirror um, also i was always a bit bored to the point where i imagined a lot of scenarios in my head about like exciting things that could happen to me. I was a daydreamer. In school, I developed a lot of coping mechanisms to stay behaved. I had this strong will just to be a good student and a good girl. And I knew how to do so because I was able to read others quite well. I would imitate their own behaviors that were deemed acceptable. That took a lot of energy out of me. But in a sense, I thought that everyone was dealing with the same thing. In high school, I still had this strong drive to be a good student, to be that good person. I would put all my energy in dancing and gymnastics. And the rest of the time, I felt as if I was holding my breath when I was studying. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone. I had a, other problems like I had some really high and low uh, moods. I had difficulty with getting into a routine actually that was quite impossible. My sleeping routine was totally off and the more I had to control myself not to be impulsive and to concentrate and do well in school, the more tired I was. The more tired I was, the harder it was to control it. So that was quite, I was in this kind of cycle until I was about 25. I always wanted to be a doctor because I really, so I knew that medicine was for me. At school, I was doing very well and I was sleeping in class, like I said, because I had the trouble with my energy, but uh, I always managed to get pretty good grades. However, after um, CJA, I didn't get into medical school. That was quite heart-wrenching for me. I had this feeling within me that this was my purpose. I've always relied on my intuition and really respected it, but the resistance I felt from life was too much to ignore. In some sense, I resented it, but again, I thought that it was like that for everyone. Actually, I, I, was, I got so tired at some point in CJEP that I burnt out and I was hospitalized for a burnout. Then in university, I started having headaches because I was so tired of like holding my breath, like I said. The migraines were more frequent. I started to vomit because of the migraines. That was a problem because a few years in a row, I was to the medical school interviews, but I was so tired and the energy it took me to concentrate, to read quickly the different scenarios, uh, made my migraines worse and I would vomit, which again was uh, quite heartbreaking for me because I knew I was meant to do this. I just didn't understand life at that point, why, why it was doing that to me, why I couldn't be the person I wanted to. I started reading a lot of self-help books. It solidified my interest for medical school and more specifically psychology and how the mind works and how it influences behavior. 
but one thing for sure is even if I read hundreds of books and I went to uh, at least 10 seminars on personality and behavior on my free time I just I just couldn't do the damn thing I couldn't get into a routine if I wanted to I tried changing my diet I tried everything under the sun because I knew something was wrong. I knew I just wasn't living the life that I was supposed to. And when I talked about it to other people, they would look at my life and be like, you're doing great, you're in shape, uh, blah, 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 you're doing good in school. I was like, but I'm so tired. I'm so fucking tired all the time. Why is this so hard? Why do I have to work harder than others? But understandably, people would just not understand my struggle because from exterior, from the outside, my life was perfect. With time, this started to play on my self-esteem too because when I set out to do something, I would fail because I had problem with doing it. It's like I knew I was in spot A and I knew I wanted to get to spot B. I knew how to do it. I had the knowledge to do it. I could explain it to other people and guide other people to go to plan B, to B, but I couldn't do it myself. I was like, is this a problem with my character? Is it a problem with my motivation? Is it a problem with grit? And I would read books on those things and I knew it was within me, but I just couldn't do it. Okay, and try to explain that to other people, they just wouldn't fucking understand. And at some point, uh, I got into medical school, that was a blessing, but the level of stress and pressure just increased because I had to study all the time and I had to like do some electives at the same time and it was just so fucking much. I would come home and I would be so exhausted that I had headaches multiple times a week. I would miss work because I was wor uh, was vomiting too much. I would try to compensate with coffee and would I would drink like maybe six cups of coffee a day because it would weirdly calm me down. At some point in medical school it was getting so tough for me because I felt like I just couldn't get anything done and I would wake up in the morning and I was like not again like I can't do this again this is way too hard the headaches I can't take care of myself because I get so tired when I come home like from work that I can't make supper I can't take care of like my apartment I'm just so fucking behind on life and I just don't know how people do it how they have energy and at some point I just got really depressed I made a video on that and at that point I didn't know I had ADHD. I just, I'm not a depressed person. I'm a hyper person. I'm happy to be alive. There are so much things that interest me, but gradually I felt like my, my inner light was dimming. And I felt like I was um, dying inside because I was just so tired. So at that point I went to see a psychologist and the psychologist was just telling me shit that I already knew like be mindful, meditate, take care of yourself. I was like yo, I know all this shit, please tell me what's wrong with me. She sent me to a psychiatrist and I remember my psychiatrist asking me so um, when it was the last time you felt truly happy? I'm like I feel happy sometimes like when my energy is up, but the rest of that time I'm just so discouraged. I don't think I'm depressed. I'm, I told them, I just can't take care of myself. It's such a sad story not to be able to live up to your own potential in my mind. And at some point, my psychiatrist asked me, can, do you have trouble concentrating? And the thing with uh, ADHD is that <sighs> Concentration, it's not that you have trouble to focus all the time, it's just you can't control the focus. So, you have trouble focusing on something that's mildly boring, okay? Because you have less dopamine in your 
brain so you need something quite interesting to get that dopamine up so you are motivated even slightly to do something and uh, that's difficult to explain to people because they're like get your act together just fucking do it just do it girl oh it's easy just do it okay for some things i could like like training because exercising raises your dopamine levels on its own so i would love exercising you know i would love other stuff like partying too maybe i'll take that out and then i told them i have I can concentrate but only sometimes and when I concentrate it's like nothing exists around me and that is called hyper focus friends and that is a sign that you have ADHD so I would always wait until the last minute my exam is tomorrow and I need to study now and I would just sit down get that kind of high and just poof, I would study I read the questionnaire about ADHD like you can't stay seated in class it was so hard for me that i would just walk out and i would kind of mind fuck myself that i didn't want to be there at some point i even thought medicine wasn't for me because i was like why is it so hard and so yeah reading the questionnaire was like reading an autobiography like someone describing me so yeah and then medication was just like it was like I could breathe for the first time. It was like someone gave me glasses and I could just see. I could see and I wasn't overwhelmed about my life anymore because I could see everything there was to see. I could see my emotions and the details of my life. And I, I knew that I could now use all of that, that new sensory information and what I learned in books or whatever to apply it to my own life and I had the energy to do so. So yeah, that's my story. I hope this freaking helps someone. If you know something is off, if you know you're not living your true life and you relate to some of the more fine things that I'm saying, you don't have access to all of you, you're entitled to that. Trust yourself and go get help because you deserve it. So guys, I'm wishing you a great day. Uh, I, again, I hope this helps someone. If you have any comments, put them down in the description below. Please ask me some questions on ADHD or anything else. Like my video, it helps me out and subscribe. I do a lot of videos on mental health and now maybe ADHD and how to boost your life to be the best person you can be. 